welcome to rock and roll number two. More guns, more fun. As in rock and roll number one, we'll show you more than 20 automatic weapons from around the world, including the Thompson submachine gun. The MF-30 30mm lightweight automatic cannon. The 1917 water-cooled machine gun. The Browning automatic rifle. And many more. In addition, we'll show you how several machine guns, including the M16, the Uzi, and the futuristic Styrog are broken down and cleaned. Plus, a couple surprises from our upcoming rock and roll number three. So sit back and get ready to rock and roll. The M1928 A1 submachine gun was the first Thompson to be used by the military, although several were offered as military models in the 1920s. This gun has become a legend, both in the movies and in real life, being used by such gangsters as Bonnie and Clyde, Machine Gun Kelly, and Pretty Boy Floyd. It fires the 45 caliber and comes with 18, 20, or 30 round detachable box magazines. 50 and 100 round drums are also available. Loading the drum is fairly easy. After removing the cover, shells can be placed by hand into spiral tracks in the magazines. The whole operation is accomplished in plain sight, making it possible to see that the correct number of cartridges are inserted and that they are correctly placed. The cartridges are moved around the tracks by six arms extending from a spring-driven rotor in the center of the drum. Each time a cartridge is fed into the rifle, the entire remaining group advances along the track equal to one cartridge diameter. The total length is just under 34 inches, with a 10 and a half inch barrel. The weight of the Tommy gun is 11 pounds, and it fires 800 rounds per minute. The Thompson is a very controllable gun to fire, and has proven to be very reliable in combat. The 1917 water cooled was the end result of the research of John Browning. After experimenting with gas operation, he came to the conclusion that recoil offered the greatest possibilities which he developed into his machine guns. The Browning guns utilized the recoil force of the expanding powder gases to push the barrel and the bolt to the rear, where the bolt and barrel are separated at which time the spent case is ejected and a new belt-fed shell is then loaded into the barrel. This all happens, of course, in less than one second. The bolt is returned by a recoil spring until it once again joins the barrel. The 1917 water-cooled machine gun uses a shroud around the barrel for cooling, which allows longer firing times. The water works like a radiator and cools the barrel. This keeps the, keeps the 
the gun cools so you can you know continually fire the gun as long as you got water to put in it you can shoot it so how do you just pour it into it or what yeah do you it do? just goes in through here and then there's steam uh, steam condensers in here and then it blows out this hole over here on the gun and then you can hook a condenser hose to it and it'll condense and go back into a can the weapon weighs just under 33 pounds without water or ammunition the total length is 39 and a half inches with a barrel length of 24 inches. The 30 caliber ammunition is fed by a 250 round fabric belt at a cyclic rate of 500 rounds per minute with a velocity of 2800 feet per second. This weapon saw extensive use in both World War I and World War II with slightly more than 68,000 manufactured. Since the 1917 was water-cooled, it was ill-suited for use as an aircraft gun. So the M1918 and later the M2 were born. The water shroud was dropped in favor of light pierced casings and by lightening the components where possible. The M2 was specifically designed as an aircraft machine gun, with the principal differences being the provision of a special retracting mechanism. Range 1,000 yards. Yep. Whoa! A solenoid sear release mechanism was supplied for fixed aircraft guns and spade grips could be fitted to the flexible guns. The M2 is over an inch longer than the M1917 with almost identical barrel lengths. The lightening of parts results in an almost 10 pound decrease in total weight. <laughs> the 250 round fabric belt was discarded in favor of a 250 round metallic belt. These improvements resulted in increasing the firing rate to 1,200 rounds per minute. First designed in the early 1950s and based on the Czech 23 series, the Uzi is one of the best and most popular submachine guns in service today. It is an extremely compact weapon, achieving its short length by having the bolt recessed to take the face of the breech and so having the main mass of the bolt forward of the breech. It was one of the first guns to use this principle so successfully. To dismantle the Uzi, first and utmost, make sure the weapon is unloaded. After clearing the weapon, Press the receiver cover catch underneath the rear sight and lift the cover up from the receiver. To remove the barrel, press the barrel locking nut catch in front of the front sight and unscrew the nut. The barrel may now be removed from the front of the receiver. Pull the bolt slightly to the rear and lift it together with the main operating spring, guide rod and buffer assembly out of the receiver. The pistol grip assembly is removed by pushing out the split pin and bushing located directly above the grip safety. Further disassembly is not necessary. To assemble, reverse this procedure. In the early years of World War II, 
The United States government was engaging in the testing of several privately produced submachine guns, of which few showed any promise. One such weapon was the M3. Because of certain defects, mainly constant feed problems from the 30-round magazine, and breakage due to the use of inferior materials, the M3A1 was introduced, nicknamed the Grease Gun due to the similarities in looks to a Grease Gun. The shooter cocks this weapon by inserting his finger into a recess in the bolt and simply pulling. The troublesome magazine remained, but the frequency of jamming was reduced to some extent by fitting it with a plastic dust cap. Due to the problems with this submachine gun, it never reached great popularity and was used sparingly in World War II and Korea. One of the advantages of this weapon include its short length of 22 and 3 quarter inches with a 7 inch stock folder. It fires the 45 caliber at a rather slow rate of only 400 rounds per minute. This allows for the shooter to fire single shots by snatching the trigger since it does not come with a select fire capability. The slow rate also allows for a controllability when firing bursts, as the gun's recoil is very slight. The M14 was the United States' answer to the NATO country's decision to adopt a common cartridge, the 7.62 NATO round. The majority of European countries opted for the FN light rifle, but this rifle did not do well in tests. The resulting winner was actually a modernized and improved M1. There are many differences, but there are also many similarities. The rifle is 44 inches in length with a 22 inch barrel and weighs 8.5 pounds unloaded. Due to the light weight and the lack of an interchangeable barrel, which overheats easily, this rifle is most commonly shot in the semi-auto mode. When fired in the fully automatic mode, it fires at 750 rounds per minute from a 20 round box magazine. The M14 was made in many configurations, which includes several with folding stocks and a sniper version with a scope which was used for considerable combat duty in Vietnam due to its superior accuracy. The M16 was originally designed by a prolific and talented inventor by the name of Eugene Stoner while he was working for the Armalite division of Fairchild Engine and Airplane Company in 1956. The Armalite Company, however, was not experienced in the sales of products to the United States government. They subsequently sold the rifle to Colt Firearms and the newest Army Standard Rifle was born. To dismantle the M16, first unload and clear the rifle. Second, remove the rear push pin above the pistol grip, which allows the upper receiver to swing forward. You can now remove the forward push pin and remove the upper receiver completely from the lower receiver. To remove the recoil buffer and recoil spring, press with a screwdriver on the recoil buffer retaining pin and remove both the recoil buffer and spring from the butt stock. The bolt and T-handle can now be removed from the upper receiver. To reassemble, repeat the previous steps in reverse order.
In this era of modern high technology warfare, conventional ground forces have become lighter and more mobile. This increased mobility has rendered many traditional support weapons virtually obsolete. The M250 caliber heavy barrel machine gun has been in service since World War I. However, the 50 caliber solid slug does not have high explosive blast and fragmentation capabilities to defend against dispersed infantry and soft skinned vehicles. Furthermore, the round's limited armor piercing capacity handicap its ability to successfully face the array of armored threats on the modern battlefield. Support Weapons Corporation has developed the answer to today's mobile combat confrontations. It's the MF-30, a lightweight, low recoil, automatic cannon that utilizes existing families of lightweight 30 millimeter ammunition. The MF-30 is the product of years of research and design. Its patented recoil system significantly reduces recoil and enables the MF-30 to be mounted anywhere a heavy machine gun is employed. This includes ground tripods, pinto mounts, helicopter and naval mounts. The MF-30 provides superior firepower, reliability and maintainability when compared to the systems it is designed to replace, namely the M2 50 caliber machine gun. Weighing just 112 pounds and only 67 inches in length, the MF-30 is comparable in size and weight and peak recoil to the M2 50 caliber. However, the MF-30 can deliver the 30 millimeter round, which in itself is far superior to the 50 caliber round. The high explosive or HE round has an extended 8 meter burst diameter for use against personnel and light vehicles. The high explosive dual purpose round is able to defeat modern armor in excess of 2000 meters and beyond. The target practice rounds enable cost effective training and practice. These rounds can be successfully deployed against a greater variety of targets in a wider range of combat situations than rounds used by weapons the MF-30 will replace, in particular machine guns and grenade launchers. And because the patented recoil system dramatically reduces recoil, the MF-30 can be mounted on a wide variety of vehicles and installations without major modifications. These include lightweight fast attack vehicles, trucks and land rovers, light boats, heavy tracked vehicles, armored personnel carriers, light helicopters, tanks, even M3 tripods. Because of its low recoil and light weight, the MF-30 is an extremely versatile weapon. Shown here mounted on a fast attack vehicle with standard 50 caliber pinto mounts, the MF-30 can be installed at several points on this type of vehicle, providing low profile, high mobility firepower to the combat area. In addition, the MF-30 has been successfully mounted and tested aboard a small ultralight aircraft. The aircraft, along with the MF-30, produce an extremely low radar and IR signature, which make it ideal for covert operations and patrolling borders, rugged terrain, and other sensitive areas. In this era of modern high technology warfare, with its many changing threats and conditions, the MF-30 is the ideal support weapon for modern armed forces. Its range, Penetration and lethality exceed the capabilities of any known comparable hostile threat system. The use of existing type classified ammunition allows users to integrate the MF-30 into multi-purpose installations without developing new expensive logistic chains. And the growth potential in the various families of lightweight 30 millimeter ammunition will allow for new ammunition developments in areas such as enhanced anti-personnel and anti-emplacement rounds further increasing the ability of the MF-30 to remain at the forefront of modern weapon technology. The Support Weapons Corporation MF-30, lightweight, low recoil, automatic cannon. The qualified choice to face modern threats from land, sea, and air. The success of the submachine gun in the Spanish Civil War caused many arms designers to look closer at weapons of this type. One such designer was Eugene Rising, who came up with the Rising Model 50 
manufactured by Harrington and Richardson of Massachusetts in 1940. After minor improvements to the original gun, it was accepted for service by the United States Marine Corps and was first used in action on Guadalcanal with terrible results, working so infrequently that many Marines threw it away in disgust and resorted to more reliable weapons. The cause of the problems were due mainly to its complex mechanism and its susceptibility to dirt. One of the unusual features of the Rising was the lack of a cocking handle. To cock this gun, the shooter must reach under the stock and pull on the cocking lever recessed under the barrel. The Rising is just under 36 inches in length, while weighing only 6 and 3 quarter pounds. It fires the 45 ACP at 550 rounds per minute, fed from either a 12 round or 20 round box magazine. About 100,000 of these models were manufactured between 1941 and 1945. The futuristic looking style AUG is the official rifle of the Austrian government, the Palace Guards of Saudi Arabia and was recently purchased by the Australian government. Manufactured by the Steyr Corporation of Austria, the AUG incorporates the maximum use of plastics and castings. It fires the 223 cartridge at a cyclic rate of 800 rounds per minute. Two of the unique features of the AUG is the capability to eject empty casings to the right or left depending on the bolt used, making it able to be used by left-handers without any problems. And the use of a quick-release barrel, which allows for the barrel to be changed quickly in case of overheating during extended fire. To break down the Steyr AUG, unload and clear the rifle. The barrel can be removed by pushing the barrel release button and rotating the barrel to the left. Next, push the butt plate retaining spring on the rear of the stock connected to the sling. The butt plate can be then removed and the hammer and operating assemblies can be slid out of the back of the stock. The receiver can be removed by extracting the takedown pin which is located slightly in front and below the ejection port. At this point, the receiver can be pulled out of the front of the stock. The bolt and operating assembly can then be removed from the receiver. No further disassembly is required. To reassemble the AUG, reverse the takedown procedure. The MP28 is a direct descendant of the MP18, the first true blowback submachine gun, with the main difference being the introduction of a selector mechanism that allowed single shots to be fired by the MP28. This gun was designed as a truly commercial weapon for export. In this, it was highly successful with large numbers made in Germany and under license in several countries. The customer could virtually state which caliber that they wanted since it was manufactured to fire the 7.62 Parabellum, the 9mm Parabellum, or the 45 caliber. Its greatest military use was in the Spanish Civil War, where it made an enormous impression, which caused a frantic rush by countries around the world to manufacture comparable weapons. The MP28 is 32 inches in length and weighs just under 9 pounds unloaded. It's available with a choice of either 20, 32, or 50 round box magazines and fires at 500 rounds per minute. Another submachine gun that was a direct descendant of an earlier German weapon is the MP40. It is a simplified and less expensive version of the MP38, probably the most infamous military submachine gun of all time. 
The MP38, generally but incorrectly referred to as the Schmeiser, since Hugo Schmeiser had nothing to do with the design or manufacture of the MP38, was a leader in its field from the very beginning. It was the first to have a successful folding butt, the first to be made entirely without wood, and the first specifically intended for use by a fast-moving mechanized army. The MP38 proved to be too expensive to manufacture in time of war, and the MP40 was introduced as a simplified weapon, differing only in the ejector, the magazine catch, and the receiver. This was used extensively by the Nazi army during World War II and can still be found in service in many small countries. The MP40 is just under 25 inches with the 8 inch stock folded and weighs just 8 and 3 quarter pounds. With a cyclic rate of 500 rounds per minute, the MP40 will empty its 32 round clip in just under 4 seconds. The Walfer MPK was developed in 1963 and although evaluated by several military authorities it has yet to be officially adopted by any armed forces. It is a blowback weapon utilizing steel stampings for most of its basic structure. The MPK fires the 9mm at a rate of 550 rounds per minute. To strip the MPK, remove the magazine and unload the weapon. A locking pin located directly in front of the magazine housing must be pushed out. The receiver assembly can now be pulled away from the trigger housing frame. The complete bolt assembly with main operating spring and guide rod can now be withdrawn from the rear of the receiver unit. Further disassembly is not necessary. T-Gun is a new gun lubricant that goes beyond all other lubricants in its ability to thoroughly and effectively lubricate all types of weapons. T-Gun solves specific problems of carbon fouling and bore letting. T-Gun also works well in gas-operated weapons, smoothing out their function while keeping them clean. T-Gun's clean operating characteristics lend themselves very well to extreme temperature and pressure applications, from heavy machine guns to lightweight, high-rate-of-fire assault weapons. The Ingram Mac 10 submachine gun in caliber 9mm is a very effective close range weapon owing to its extremely high cyclic rate of over 1100 rounds per minute. Because of this rate of fire, there are unusually high forces operating on the working parts of the gun, especially the bolt mechanism. The Colt AR-15 carbine is a gas operated caliber 223 weapon which has chronic problems from fouling and excessive carbon buildup in the firing pin, bolt, and carrier assemblies. This necessitates the use of a high-quality lubricant capable of withstanding the fouling problems associated with these high-pressure, high-temperature conditions of operation. The LaFrance Specialty Supernova is a 12-gauge gas-operated semi-automatic entry pistol designed specifically for police SWAT teams and military assault forces. Early in the development of this shotgun, extreme carbon fouling of the weapon's gas system dictated the use of a very special high temperature lubricant which has eliminated this problem. A unique problem to the 8-inch barreled K-gun was caused by unburned powder residue freezing the firing pin and bolt assembly shut in less than 500 rounds. T-gun's unique properties have completely eliminated this freezing problem. After 500 rounds fired, the carbon may now be simply wiped away as shown here. The special properties of T-Gun have expanded the cleaning cycle of the carrier assembly in this weapon to more than 5,000 rounds. T-Gun is distributed by ProLube Products Company, Post Office Box 1526, Rancho California, California, zip code 92390. Dealer inquiries are invited.
The Mauser broom handle is considered to be one of the finest machine pistols ever made. All the various Mauser models, including the Schnellfuhrer machine pistol shown here, were made by the Mauser work of Germany. Introduced at the end of the 19th century, the broom handle was created by Paul von Mauser and was the first truly successful automatic pistol. Variations of this pistol were adopted by as many as 20 nations at different times. It was a particular favorite of the Chinese. In Asia, to have a Mauser or a copy of one was to possess true status. One of the most unique features of this gun is the detachable wooden stock, which also serves as a holster, conveniently housing the pistol. The broom handle can be fired with or without the wooden holster stock, but they are very uncontrollable without it. These guns have become highly sought after by collectors in either the semi or fully automatic mode. It's available in three different calibers, 7.63 Mauser, 9mm Parabellum, and a limited production in 7.65 Parabellum. The Mauser fires at a rate of 900 rounds per minute. Caught unaware and ill-equipped by the Blitzkrieg, England was thrust into World War II without a submachine gun of any kind. The threat of invasion by air and sea in the summer of 1940 led to a panic expansion of the arms industry and a frantic search for a submachine gun of any kind. The first Sten appeared in the summer of 1941, named after the two designers, Shepard and Turpin, and the Royal Small Arms Factory at Enfield. The basic Sten was very simple and inexpensive to manufacture with early models costing under $10 to build and later ones costing slightly more. The Sten Mark II was the workhorse of the models with over 2 million made in three years. The gun was easily dismantled into its component parts, making it perfect for clandestine operations of the underground forces in Europe and elsewhere. The sights were set at the factory for 100 yards and could not be set to zero. The Sten Mark II is 30 inches long with a 7 and 3 quarter inch barrel and weighs just 6 and a half pounds. It will fire at a rate of 550 rounds per minute from the 32-round box magazine, which was generally loaded only to 30 rounds to minimize strain on the magazine spring and hence reduce chance. Developed by Gordon Ingram for the Military Armament Corporation, or MAC for short, the Ingram MAC-10 is an extremely compact submachine gun which has grown very popular with drug dealers, terrorists, and other clandestine operations where an easily concealable full automatic weapon is needed. With the overhung bolt and the magazine feeding through the pistol grip, this weapon has the center of balance right over the top of the grip which makes it a very steady weapon that can be fired one-handed successfully. The MAC-10 is available in either 9mm or 45 ACP and fires at the incredible fast rate of 1100 rounds per minute. To break down the MAC-10, first unload and clear the weapon. With a screwdriver, press the receiver pin under the bolt and remove it completely. You can then remove the receiver pin catch. The bolt assembly can then be removed. To remove the bolt, pull the bolt back and remove the bolt handle at which time the bolt will slide out to the rear. The reason the semi-auto MAC-10 has become so popular with criminals and unpopular with the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms is that the earlier open bolt models could be easily converted to a full auto in a matter of seconds by breaking off the disconnector with a screwdriver. 
this conversion could not be reversed. This caused all open bolt semi-automatic Mac 10s to be reclassified as fully auto and the Mac 10 was changed to the closed bolt configuration. To reassemble, repeat the preceding steps in reverse order. Probably the most successful of the many designs produced by Fabrique Nationale has to be the FNFAL. Chambered in the 762 NATO round, more than 36 countries have purchased the FAL for use by their armed forces. Developed from the Model 49, the FAL first appeared in 1950, and large orders started in 1953. Its lightweight and the high-powered round caused excessive climb when fired in the fully automatic mode. Due to the DTA mill brake installed on this FAL, we were able to fire fully auto and be in complete control. Its simplicity in maintenance and operation, combined with the FAL's reliability, set a new standard for assault rifles when it was released, and it has continued as a leading design for over 30 years. Designed to be fired for cover while walking through no man's land, the Browning automatic rifle never quite lived up to John Browning's hopes. It was too heavy and too bulky at 20 pounds and 45 inches long to be fired from the shoulder as a rifle. For automatic fire, it lacked the weight to remain controllable. In its time, however, it was a brilliant design produced in record time. The early versions used in World War I were capable of full or semi-automatic fire, while the World War II version was fully automatic only, with a provision for two rates of fire, 350 or 500 rounds per minute. Slow fire! Used in every American conflict, from World War I to the Korean War, the Browning automatic rifle has proven to be a reliable machine gun, despite its setbacks. Although classified as a state-produced rifle that has had more than one manufacturer in the past, in its country of origin, Germany, the G3 is now made only by Heckler & Koch. Firing the 7.62 NATO round, the G3 has been purchased by more than 25 countries worldwide from H&K and is also made in many other countries under license to H&K. Made with sheet metal stampings and plastic stock, the whole rifle requires the minimum of expensive machining, making it very cost effective. At 40 inches with a 17 and 3 quarter inch barrel, this is one of the longest fully automatic rifles. But the use of the lightweight material have kept the total weight under 10 pounds. The 20 round magazine is able to feed the 7.62 NATO shell at 550 rounds per minute. To disassemble the G3, first unload and clear the weapon. You may then press the two push pins located just behind the pistol grip and remove the buttstock containing the recoil spring and guide. Next is the pistol grip and firing mechanism, which is removed by pulling on the grip. To remove the bolt and carrier assembly, place your hand over the rear of the receiver and pull the bolt operating lever to the rear.
The bolt and carrier assembly will then slide out to the rear. Further disassembly is not required. To put the G3 back together, reverse the disassembly steps in order. Made popular by the recent Rambo movies, the M60 has been around since the late 1950s and in service as the standard squad general purpose machine gun in the United States Army since the early 1960s. Using the same feed system as the German MG42, and the bolt and locking systems of the FG-42, the M60 fires the 7.62 NATO round from a metallic belt at 600 rounds per minute. The 43 and 3 quarter inch overall length and 23 pound weight of the M60 make it unacceptable as an individual weapon, but it is used extensively as a supported weapon, either on a bipod, tripod, or mounted on a vehicle. Fabian Brothers Sporting Goods Incorporated of San Diego, California presents the DTA Mill Break, the state-of-the-art answer to today's high technology weapons. Because they are lightweight handheld firearms capable of rapid semi-automatic or fully automatic fire, assault rifles have proven to be effective for military, police, and civilian applications. Yet these same distinct advantages work against the weapon's shooting accuracy and overall efficiency. Muzzle climb and recoil, demonstrated here in slow motion, are a direct result of the assault rifle's lightweight and short barrel length, thereby affecting the shooter's ability to maintain constant target acquisition. Baby and Brothers Sporting Goods Incorporated manufactures the patented DTA mill brake, a product that has been proven to eliminate the inherent disadvantages of today's modern assault rifles. The DTA mill brake is the most sophisticated muzzle control device ever developed. These deceptively simple looking holes are actually computer designed ports which inhibit muzzle climb and muzzle sway, thus enabling the shooter to maintain constant target acquisition. The DTA mill brake is manufactured to military specifications from a solid block of machine bar steel. It effectively reduces recoil up to 40%, controls vertical and horizontal muzzle displacement, suppresses flash, increases muzzle velocity up to 20 feet per second, and achieves all of the above with no increase in noise levels. These features provide more controlled and accurate fire for both the experienced and novice shooter, therefore reducing weapon training time and training expense. In tactical law enforcement situations where weapon control is absolutely essential, the DTA mill brake gives that extra margin of safety and effectiveness. The Colt M16 fires the 223 cartridge, first demonstrated without the mill brake, and now with the DTA mill brake. Still see it? Yeah, go on. Good. A grid effect highlights the reduced recoil and muzzle climb. Shown here without the mill brake, And now with the mill break.
The next weapon is the Heckler Koch G3. Fires a 308 cartridge, shown here without the mill brake. And now with the DTA mill brake. Actively in use by military, government, and police in the United States and around the world, the DTA mill brake is easily installed and virtually maintenance free, never needing to be removed for cleaning. To install, just simply remove the standard flash suppressor from the weapon's muzzle and replace with the DTA mill brake. All that's needed is one crescent wrench and one Allen wrench. The Allen wrench comes included in the DTA package. Of particular importance is the positioning of the holes or ports. The DTA mill brake's sophisticated design provides a balanced thrust of the porting, which enables the user to dial out climb and side swing on an individual basis. This feature can be adjusted for both right and left-handed shooters and provides exacting muzzle control. This is the popular Uzi 9mm, shown without the mill brake. And now with the DTA mill brake. For semi-automatic IPSC shooting, rapid target realignment is necessary for success. The DTA mill brake's reduced recoil and muzzle control features are ideally suited for this purpose and afford the shooter continuous sight alignment. The M1A and the Colt AR-15. The DTA mill brake is actively used and endorsed by top IPSC shooters around the country. The DTA Sport Brake has been designed for sporting rifles and is primarily designed to reduce recoil, once again enabling the shooter to maintain sight alignment and be more accurate with fire. This Remington 788 fires 308 caliber, shown here without the mill brake and now with the DTA mill brake. When shooting from a bench rest, the DTA mill brake will enable you to reduce group sizes. This has been proven in extensive machine rest testing. The following groups were shot at 50 yards for comparison. A comparison of targets shows the group sizes are reduced up to 25%. The DTA mill brake has been reviewed and recommended by Harris Publications Assault Rifle Annual, Guns Magazine, Police Product News, Soldier of Fortune magazine, and Long Survival Publications. It's actively used by police agencies, United States Department of Energy, and other government agencies, top IPSC shooters, and military organizations around the world. The DTA mill brake is available for all modern assault rifles. In sufficient quantities, the DTA mill brake can be developed for and adapted to any modern assault weapon. For weapons without standard flash suppressors, such as the Mini-14, M1 carbine, and the Uzi, DTA offers a low-cost barrel threading service. The DTA mill brake works, effectively reducing muzzle climb, muzzle sway, and weapon recoil, and thereby enabling the shooter to fire more accurately and with greater control. The DTA mill brake is a genuine breakthrough in firearm technology, and at its moderate cost, should be considered for all semi-automatic and fully automatic weapons. To order the DTA mill brake, call 1-800-942-TAPE. That's 1-800-942-8273. In California, 1-619-569-4000. For the most recent pricing information on the DTA mill brake for your particular weapon. If you've liked rock and roll number one and rock and roll number two, then you're going to love rock and roll number three. This tape features 10 of the most beautiful Southern California women shooting their favorite machine guns. It is, of course, professionally produced in full color and utilizes slow motion, graphics, music, narration, and beautiful women firing full auto.
To order direct, call 1-800-942-TAPE. That's 1-800-942-8273. In California, 619-569-4000. Or send $49.95 to mail order video. 7888 Ostro Street, Suite A, San Diego, California, 92111. If your favorite video rental store does not carry the Rock and Roll series, please forward the previous information. Welcome to Rock and Roll Number 1, Fully Automatic Machine Gun Fun. In this program, we'll look at automatic weapons from around the world, including the Beretta P-12S from Italy, the Colt M-16 from the United States, from Israel, the Uzi 9mm, the Russian AK-47, the Ingram Mac-10, it's all here, plus lots more, so sit back and get ready to rock and roll. Shooter, stand by! Ready! What's it like to be known as the fastest, most accurate pistol shooter alive? Only one man knows for sure. Rob Latham of Mesa, Arizona. Today, he's putting that reputation on the line because as this exciting four-stage pistol competition unfolds, he'll be challenged by more than 200 of the best pistol shooters in the world, all competing for $150,000 in cash and prizes as the 1985 National Rifle Association's Bianchi Cup gets underway. Five events, it's all on steel targets. Each course is different from the next. Every shooter shoots a total of five courses of fire, or five stages, and they throw out their worst event. Again, we're trying to promote speed. We want to get that let it all hang out type of an atmosphere. And uh, this way, if you have a disaster run, uh, a gun malfunction, or the shooter just simply doesn't do well one time, that side of his hair, he can keep on pushing for a better score. That's Mike Fitchman, who along with Mike Dalton developed the course of fire you're about to see. Described in two words, it's speed and steel. Because today, more than 250 of the world's fastest and most accurate pistol shooters compete against the clock and themselves as the 1984 Steel Challenge World Speed Shooting Championship gets underway. Soldier of Fortune magazine presents 
the 1984 Soldier of Fortune convention. In this videotape, we'll take you rappelling down the side of a 14-story building, racing through the desert on the Warrior Fast Attack Vehicle. And here's something new and different this year, pugil stick competitions. Plus, you'll see all phases of the Soldier of Fortune three-gun combat match with pistol, rifle, and shotgun. The latest weapons demonstrated by the manufacturers themselves. New products at the Military Arms and Collectors Show. Speakers including Soldier of Fortune magazine publisher Robert K. Brown, Major General J.K. Singlob, and Afghan freedom fighter Hassan Galandi. And of course, more of what's made the Soldier of Fortune convention what it is today. The sport of combat shooting is not new. While the Southwest Pistol League is generally credited with starting the competition aspect of combat shooting, the roots stretch back to the training of Union soldiers during the Civil War. The military has been utilizing combat methods since the introduction of the 1855 rifle musket, the first military rifle with precision sights. Military training consisted of both rifle and handgun practice. And although law enforcement agencies, such as the FBI, have been using the shotgun in training and on duty, combat shotgun competitions have only been introduced in the last decade. The popularity of such events, such as the Steel Challenge, which has its own separate shotgun match, has brought the shotgun into mainstream combat shooting. One of the consistent top contenders in the shooting sports is John Shaw. Shaw has won more major tournaments and finished consistently higher than any other combat shooter in the world. His victories include the 1980 and 1981 IPSC National Championships, gold medals in the International IPSC Championships, and five consecutive Soldier of Fortune Shotgun Championships. His speed and accuracy have earned him the title of the fastest shotgun in the world. When not competing and not practicing, he also teaches combat shooting to law enforcement personnel, military personnel, and civilians at his own Mid-South Institute of Self-Defense Shooting, MISS, which he founded in 1982. He has also written two books on shooting, Shoot to Win and You Can't Miss. John Shaw recently conducted a shotgun seminar at the 1986 Steel Challenge. Here are the highlights of that seminar. The interest in practical shooting has grown dramatically over the past several years. Names such as Rob Latham, Brian Enos, John Shaw, and many more have become known worldwide in the households of many shooters. Hello, I'm Lenny McGill. Over the past several years, I've been producing videotapes for the shooting industry. In particular, the firearms-related pistol competitions known as the Steel Challenge and the Bianchi Cup. Now, at these tournaments, I've had the opportunity to interview some of the best pistol shooters in the world. We talked about their techniques, their stance, their trigger pull, their practice methods, even the type of guns they use. This tape is a compilation of those interviews. It's called Pistol Masters. So whether you're a beginning shooter or an accomplished shooter and been shooting for a while, I'm sure that you're going to be able to learn something from the best pistol shooters in the world. So, without any further delay, let's get started in what I like to call Pistol Masters.